Texas Tech starts Big 12 play off on a high note with a 30-22 victory over Big 12 newcomers in the Arizona State Sun Devils. In today's video, we'll recap the video and discuss how the defense absolutely showed out in this one. One particular member of the secondary that looked absolutely phenomenal and then why, hey, it may have been a sloppy offensive performance, but when you got a guy like Taj Brooks, you can hide a lot of flaws. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell for 100% free daily Texas Tech football and men's basketball updates all year long. This is the most interactive Texas Tech YouTube channel and, well, the largest independent Texas Tech YouTube channel. So if you want to join the Back to 12 squad, all you got to do is like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. All right, I told you guys we're interactive here. I want to hear from you guys. Go down to the pinned comment below and give me your one word to describe this Texas Tech 30-22 victory over the Arizona State Sun Devils. Was it perfect? No. Was it a win? Yes. Were there building blocks? in terms of going into the next Big 12 game for the Red Raiders? Absolutely. Specifically on the defensive side, but give me your one word down on the pinned comment below to describe this Texas Tech 30-22 victory over the Sun Devils. All right, let's get straight to the stats here because I think that that's where it's the most interesting. You see the net total yards on your screen right there. Texas Tech actually got outgained in this one, but when you look at the turnover margin, and I like to include the turnover margin in terms of fourth down conversions, because if you don't get the fourth down, it is a turnover. It is the same thing, in my opinion. I've been critical of Texas Tech when they did so on fourth downs. I'm going to be critical of Arizona State in the sense that they had four turnovers in this game, did the Sun Devils, if you include the loss of downs. So that happened. Texas Tech got out gained. They look good, though, in the running department in terms of was it the most efficient game that they had for the Red Raiders in terms of rushing the football? Absolutely not. But again, Taj Brooks hides a lot of flaws, and Cam Dickey had one of the most impressive runs I've seen by a true freshman in a situation where you were trying to milk the clock, right? Arizona State went down and scored after Texas Tech failed to convert a third down later on in the drive, but... Texas Tech had a long way to go. It was about third and 10 plus on this. And Cam Dickey made two guys miss, got out to the outside for a 16-yard game and really milked some clock off for the Red Raiders to inevitably get this 30 to 22 victory um, against Arizona State. Now, let's go look at the Red Raiders stats real quick on this one, as you can see on your screen right now. Baron Morton, not great. I don't think he was great by any stretch of the imagination, but he wasn't bad, right? You don't like that completion percentage in terms of 55%, uh, 24 of 44, but he threw for over 200 yards, two TDs. He didn't make mistakes. And I know that that sounds so elementary in terms of the bar that we have for quarterbacks. But at the same time, when your defense plays the way that it did, and we'll talk about that more here in just a second. And also you have a guy like Taj Brooks, the name of the game for the quarterback position for Texas Tech is don't make mistakes, period, right? And Baron Morton, albeit, didn't complete a ton of passes in terms of 55%. As I mentioned, he didn't make mistakes, and that was big. And he made a couple of throws under pressure yesterday because Arizona State was dialing it up that were impressive. Now, hey, you look at who the leading wide receiver was, no shock. 13 targets for Josh Kelly, 10 receptions. 89 yards and a touchdown. Caleb Payday Douglas, as you see right there, with five catches for 63 yards as well. John Carlos Miller had the other touchdown alongside Josh Kelly that came through the air, his lone reception for the tight end. You look at the rushing yards for Texas Tech, 27 carries for Taj Brooks, 117 yards. He only averaged 4.3 yards per carry. Still not too bad, people. Um, at the end of the day, if you're averaging four plus yards a carry, you're you're doing something right. And Taj remains on track to become the all-time leading rusher in Texas Tech program history. Now, looking at the defensive side of things for the Red Raiders, again, they did give up 376 total yards of offense, and they had one really bad play that really was similar to the one that they had against UNT out in the flat and just did not tackle. They did not get a hand on Scadaboo when it came to his reception out there for his touchdown in this one. They allowed 282 yards passing, only 94 yards rushing 
did the Red Raiders allow in this one? They also held Arizona State to five for 13 on third downs. The Red Raiders were eight of 17. So a little similar there, but the big stat again, turnovers, albeit not the traditional ones. The Red Raiders did hold Arizona State to 0 for three on fourth down attempts. Now you look at who led them in tackles and everything. Ben Roberts and Jacob Rodriguez are really nice to have right there in the middle of your defense. It seems like they've got the communication down for Texas Tech. You've got Chapman Lewis, a guy that I think is a bona fide star in that secondary for Texas Tech. He's not afraid to go downhill and be impactful in the run game. And oh yeah, he's not too bad of a cover safety as well. You had Mo Horn, but the guy that I really wanted to talk about in this one as I get back on the screen for you guys is Macho Stevenson. You had no Braylon Lux yesterday in this game. Macho Stevenson actually got his first collegiate start at corner. And you look at what happened for Arizona State in terms of the passing game. And you had Jordan Tyson, who was their leading guy, right? You held him to two for 33. And by no means is that just Macho Stevenson doing it. But you noticed when you go back on tape and you look at things, he's on Tyson quite a bit. And by the way, Tyson is related to the former Red Raider, Jalen Tyson, um, on the hardwood. But he did a phenomenal job, I thought, in coverage. And the really the big thing that stood out to me in this one, because if I had one word to describe the Texas Tech offense, it would be sloppy. I, I thought they were kind of sloppy. They went out and got a 14-point lead, and then they kind of became lethargic almost in a way. Give some credit to the Arizona State defense. They were really dialing up pressure after they got down. But I thought Texas Tech kind of was stagnant a little bit and almost too reliant in terms of, hey, Taj, make something happen for us. Um, that being said, they did enough in key moments to the Texas Tech offense. I want to talk more about how the defense, I thought, had a sensational game plan from the jump. We talked about it all week long in terms of what did Texas Tech defensively have to do to make Arizona State uncomfortable? Not the greatest offense in the world, right? They really had played Texas State. That was their big matchup so far down in San Marcos, and they won by three points, did the Sun Devils. But what had Texas Tech struggled with arguably the most in the Tim DeRuiter era when it came to the quarterback position. Running quarterback. Sam Levitt, the starting quarterback for Arizona State, is a pretty damn mobile quarterback, okay? And we talked about it all week leading up to this game. If you can make Sam Levitt a passer, your odds of winning exponentially increase. Hashtag Doge emoji to the moon, right? That's exactly what happened. And they made him a passer. He passed 38 times. He was 22 for 38, 282 yards. And 66 of that came on a broken play by Texas Tech. Still counts. It is what it is. But you limited him to nine rushing attempts for 25 yards, albeit he did have one touchdown. It was very close to the goal line. That's the recipe for success for Texas Tech. Did they get an absolute ton of pressure on Sam Levitt, I mean, really, when you look at things, yes, but not in the way that you think, right? In the terms of, I hear people saying they need to get more sacks. I agree, but QB pressures and QB hurries are almost just as good, especially when your secondary is playing this well overall. I thought Texas Tech and Tim DeRuiter defensively came in with a phenomenal game plan and they executed it to a T. Yes, I understand the score was 30 to 22. Arizona State scored this touchdown in garbage time at the very end of this game where it was one of those deals where they were going quick. They scored, give credit to them, but Texas Tech recovered the onside kick at the end of the day, and the onside kick didn't even go 10 yards. But they got it, did the Red Raiders, and it felt like Texas Tech had a firm grip on this, not from the sense of, in the second half, the offense, but I thought the defense was just sensational in this one in terms of a lot of things that they did well specifically starting at the linebacker spot I thought they led the way you had a guy like Chapman Lewis back there in the secondary and then shout out to Macho Stevenson again his first collegiate start and I thought he looked really really good as my light dies on me right here in the middle of the video I guess that means it's time to wrap it up you know you get some cues sometimes just got to roll with the punches but again the Red Raiders Win 30-22 in their Big 12 opener. They will move on to Cincinnati, a team that put it on the Houston Cougars up in Ohio in their Big 12 opener. A chance to go to 4-1 and one for the Red Raiders. Listen, I was 
bashing this team after the Washington State game. But if I told you they had a chance to be four and one, potentially if they beat Cincinnati going into the Arizona matchup, I think a lot of you would have taken it. And again, not getting there in the traditional sense in terms of what we expected, but I like W's. I know you do too. And Texas Tech got one against Arizona State. One more time before we head out of here, give me your one word to describe this 30-22 victory for Texas Tech in their Big 12 opener against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Let me know down on the pinned comment below. And mine is just defense. I thought this was a defensive win after really all season where it felt like the offense was carrying you or the offense was one of those situations where it's like, hey, the offense is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. You look at ACU, you look at what happened against UNT in some regards. Obviously, defensively, they were decent against Washington State, but Texas Tech offense really didn't do them any favors in terms of field position, right? This was a defensive win, in my opinion, after Texas Tech got out to that 14-0 lead and then kind of, it felt like they coasted offensively for the remainder of the game outside of a play here or there. This was a defensive win. Tim DeRuder and crew deserve a lot of credit. So my one word is defense. Let me know yours down on the pinned comment below. And one more reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech football and men's basketball all year long. We will be back next week for a live watch party and live stream of Texas Tech Cincinnati. And I'll go ahead and put this out there. I don't know the line yet. The line has not been released at the time of this recording. I think Texas Tech is going to be favored in this game by about four and a half, five points at home. That's kind of where I think the range is for the Red Raiders to be favored over Cincinnati. But you celebrate this one if you're a Texas Tech fan. Weekends feel a lot better in the fall when the Red Raiders win football games. Again, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube for 100% free daily content. There's no other channel doing it like this. Come join the Back to 12 squad today, and all you got to do is like the video and hit that subscribe button.